Hello, my favorite audio files and music lovers. This is Real World Audio, and we are continuing our step by step journey on how to build your system while focusing on a successful system building strategy. So, this is the third episode, and we are continuing with the source selection. So, if you are looking for an analog source, the, to be successful with it is to have a good table and an arm combination. Uh, that's the most important. Just have a, a solid table with a solid arm. And, uh, and if you are getting into audio now, I would really highly recommend to start with a moving magnet cartridge. Uh, which is uh, a simpler option and it's the best entry into the analog world. If you are new to vinyl, I do not recommend starting with moving coil cartridges because those require additional step up uh, to bring the signal to a level where the phono level input can take care of it and because of that step up uh, there are additional issues coming up and if you want to tackle too many issues at the same time well you are you have the chance to fail to a much higher degree compared to uh, walking a sure path and, and and some would say okay but there's a high output moving coil cartridges but uh, no uh, I, I have uh, seen a lot of people trying that high output moving coil cartridge and um, they are much more finicky to work with than moving magnet cartridges it's much harder to find a, a phono stage that that can uh, elevate or I would say utilize the moving a high output moving coil cartridge to its full and if you pick uh, moving coil for starters then um, then you have a much higher chance to be in unhappy land compared to starting with moving magnet um, yeah uh, and what else in addition, huge error with vinyl is to get a good table and a weak phono stage. So just a good table and arm and going for moving magnet is not enough by itself. You need a very solid stable phono stage because otherwise it's going to sound quite disappointing. If you have issues with your phono stage, it doesn't matter how your table is, you can put the best cartridge on it with a pull from a stage, it will be uh, as, as uh, I think it was in Faulty Towers was it in Faulty Towers when he was crying disappointed yeah, that, that's, that's what you will be saying so, now let's go to uh, step 3 in our audio system build strategy after you have your source down be it digital or analog or maybe both then the next thing you can focus on is wiring it's the interconnect cables so now when you have a proper room properly placed, placed and chosen loudspeakers driven by the right kind of amplifier and using a source that can retrieve information from your software now you are in the position to play around with interconnects because there's a lot of people who start playing with interconnects but they do not have the source down, they do not have the room down, the, the loudspeaker doesn't match the amplifier, they have major issues and they think 
they can fix that with interconnects absolutely not if that's the situation and you are trying to improve the level of the cabling between your systems all you will be doing is magnify the errors in your system because the wires they are they don't just connect your components they also pose limitations and by improving your wiring you are also removing limitations between how the components can talk to each other so there com you are opening up the lines of communications in your system and if your system they are the parts are angry at each other then you are going to get a lot of shouting and a lot of nastiness by upgrading the interconnect and of course you will be blaming those pesky cables those expensive interconnects they are not good i put them in my system and and all i got was even worse sound all of those guys who sell expensive cables are scammers wow that's why such posts <laughs> arise because people follow that sort of strategy so that's why you have to get your shit together <laughs> before you attempt to cross your wires <laughs> okay so and the first wires to upgrade i i recommend the interconnect why because uh, they are uh, i would say they deal with signals at the lowest levels but they are comparatively affordable speaker cables power cords are just as important as interconnects however they are much more expensive so if you want to save on your cost and you want to avoid very costly mistakes i would suggest start playing around with the interconnects because those are going to cost you the least and if you notice improvements in your system then it's safe for you to go for the more expensive uh, speaker cables and power cords because uh, upgrading those will continue the improvement that you have experienced with the interconnect but if you have experienced deterioration with interconnect upgrade then you really have to uh, make serious investigation into the source you are using in, into the loudspeakers you are using the amplifier your room and your approach to system building because probably it's not a single one of those components that's responsible for failure with interconnect upgrades but the failure is the wrong approach or lack of a systematic approach to system building and then after you are at this stage that you have seen improvements by improving your uh, interconnect now is the time to optimize your amplifier because now you will be able to actually hear what a really good amplifier can bring to the table and and you don't need to seriously think about radically changing your amplifier maybe it needs only tweaking uh, start first by just tweaking your amp or maybe uh get into diy and then just uh, start like uh, working on the connectors on the internal wiring something uh, smaller just baby steps steps first that's good enough so so if you cannot afford to buy like the, the amplifier of your dreams do not despair just by taking these tiny steps might be enough to get you where you want to be what you need 
because if you are substantially satisfied with your system at this, at this point and you just want more, then the most likely advice is to tweak your amplifier and not getting a completely different amplifier because that's going to totally rearrange the, the priorities, the balance of your system. So just focus on, on, on baby steps, on little steps. And, uh, and if you change your amplifier, if you like your amplifier, get a replacement that is similar to your amp, has a similar topology, similar design philosophy. And if you are unhappy with what you want, then I recommend toying around with different amplifiers, but explicitly only those amplifiers that match your loudspeakers. If there's a gross mismatch between uh, the loudspeaker and the potential amplifier, then do not even consider it. There's hundreds of amplifiers with great reviews. There's thousands of uh, amplifier schematics online that you can build if you want to build your own. Uh, and, and there's a, a vast number of them which hundreds of people love. You can choose any of them. The, you don't need to fixate only on a single one and it's a make or break situation and, and you need to have it at all costs. No, you must not have it at all costs unless you want to start your audio journey from scratch. Because if you are choosing an amplifier that doesn't match your loudspeakers, then you are going back to square zero you are going back to preschool and starting from ground zero level zero so once you have your amp tweaked or upgraded then this is really seriously time to look for uh, speaker cables and power cords until now maybe you already were playing around with speaker cables power cords but now is the time to look into the heavyweight power cords. And, and power cords can get really expensive. Even if you DIY them, the material cost can be substantial at a level even for a DIY power cord that you maybe uh, at the beginning of your audio journey were considering for your entire system. And that can be the price you can <laughs> invest to create the final power cord for your system. And I can say, yes, it's going to make a huge difference, especially in power delivery, but also in detail level and everything, every area. And, and also, if you do not, have not upgraded to uh, an amplifier that you feel is your final amplifier or close to it, then do not waste time on uh, getting the last statement on speaker cables and power cords because you are not going to have full benefit for it, from them. And also by choosing specific uh, speaker cables and power cords, they are not just uh, improving the ability of your system, but they are also uh, help to voice your system to change your voicing to a certain direction and you need that to be or kind of almost like the final tweak towards the sound you want to have from your system and and if you get that final tweak before you are settled with your amplifier then once you change your amp it is very likely that you will have to change your power cords and speaker cables as well to match that new amp. So we will continue from here. Have an awesome day. Listen to music. Bye-bye.